Hello everyone. In today's video, we'll be looking at how we can create some variety in a scene using the Token Mold module, as well as the newly implemented website Token Vault, which allows for tokens to be purchased and then customized all within the website itself. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works using the example here, the male villager. After you've purchased a token, you will see a screen that looks like this. Not all tokens will have the same variables that you can change, but for this particular villager, we can change the outfit, the tool, the head, the hair, and horns, either adding horns or taking them away and deciding on what color they should be. So we can see there are a number of changes we can make with just this one token. Now, I, for my use today, I'm just gonna be filling a scene, so I don't really need anything specific. So I'm just going to randomize everything, and then I will save it as a WebP, clicking the Foundry icon right there. And I'm going to do that, we'll say like eight or nine times, so I can get a wide selection of different appearances. All right. In Token Vault, I randomized the image of the male villager a number of times. I put all of those images in one folder, and I put that folder where I can access it in Foundry. Back in Foundry, I've enabled, I've enabled the Token Mold module. Token Mold will allow for me to randomize my naming, randomize HP, as well as decide whether I want to have certain attributes shown both for me to see or for the players to see. To start off, the simplest factor is just the naming. But even for the naming, there are a number of different options you can use. You can have NPC job titles, you can have adjectives, you can have um, different languages. So take a look at what you want to use. Right now though, I just have human male names, which are placed at the front, and the base name is removed. So all we'll come up with is names like John, Jim, Joe, but more creative than that. We have system specific. This will decide whether the HP dice rolling is going to be sent to chat and how the token is going to be sized to the map scale. Here we have what bars are going to be shown as far as whether we want to show the attributes like HP, experience, things like that, and scale and rotation and mirroring, basically the normal things you'd have for a token. After that, we have stat overlay if we want to have an overlay for information about the character, such as like how much gold it has, what HP is, things like that. Let's go ahead and see how this functions though, and we're going to use a a villager, or I should say a commoner token from the monster SRD. So we'll go ahead and import that and play with that first. So the first thing I want to do after importing my commoner token or commoner actor is I want to change the image to make use of all of the images I created earlier in Token Vault. And to do that, I click prototype token at the top. I go to image. I click the folder icon browse file and I find the folder where all of my images were stored and what we will be using today is we will be using the wildcard feature and to do this we want to do two things first click the box check the box that is next to randomize wildcard images right here and then we also want to make use of the asterisk symbol when you click on a token or an image within your folder, you will see the file directory come up. Just delete the, the file name itself and replace it with the asterisk symbol, like so. And then update. And now, when I bring my commoner onto the scene, it'll use any of the images within that folder. Let's take one more look at that and we'll take a look at what is happening right now with token mold and the naming and HP. So again, prototype token, image, randomized wildcard images, file name, slash, asterisk symbol right there. And you are set for the images. Now, if we go to our tokens, we can see token mold is giving each of them a different name based on the settings that we set up earlier, as well as some of the dice were being rolled there to determine how much HP each of them are going to have. 2, 7, 4, and 4. So the HP is being decided randomly for each of them as well. 
You can decide all of this within the settings, what you like and what you don't like. As a final note before we wrap things up, let me show off how you can use the stat overlay I mentioned previously. So in settings, I've added in two particular stat overlays, one for HP and one for AC. I have the HP value and the AC value. Now if I hover over any of my tokens, we can see 2 health, 10 AC, 4 health, 10 AC. This baboon is dead, so 0 health, 12 AC. So you can see how you can use this as a alternative to other modules such as like token info where you can quickly decide on your own overlays for tokens. All right, that is where we'll finish for today. There are a number of other changes you can make using token mold to really add some nice variety to your scene, especially paired with other options such as the wildcard feature which is part of the core foundry program. And also, of course, taking a look at Token Vault and deciding if you want to make your own tokens. Well, thank you everyone for listening. Let me know if you have any questions or comments down below.